Okay, Victoria, who I had the absolute joy of meeting just a few weeks ago when they were visiting Toronto. Um, I'd heard of Victoria and their work for a couple of years. We'd run in adjacent communities in Toronto, Scarborough, Guelph, Ontario more generally, but it was towards the beginning of the pandemic that I really connected with your work. Um, and it was this one, it really, like, it was more generally, I think we like followed each other, but it was this one particular post that I chatted to you about. <laughs> the other day, which was this song that Victoria had written and recorded and uploaded to Instagram. And I think I listened to that 40 something second clip like a hundred times, <laughs> like <laughs> number one fan of that song, because it was, I, it was so special to feel so close to someone's voice and the sweetness of the lyrics and the chords and the way that it all came together to feel so excited and moved to find a poet so in touch with music and musicality as Victoria is um, and how such deep musicality connects to feeling. And as we talked about sometimes to being a Pisces and I love Pisces. <laughs> I love astrology and I also love the way Victoria writes astrology and fun and joy and love into their work and I'm constantly astounded by the wit like formally and content wise that I feel like is at the seed of of their poetry a wit that is equally capable of delight as it is um as as it is other things and their poem Sunlight, published by Peach Mac, is one of my favorites. And it's the way like a playlist and a nomination and a camera in the morning, everything can coexist in Victoria's work, like a field of flowers visited by our eye, a perusing bumblebee under an embarrassing sun. Um, I hope anchor can be deep asleep again. And I hope that we can steal feeling after feeling after feeling. Victoria. Thank you. That was really sweet. Uh, <laughs> I'm a little overwhelmed. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for inviting me. And I'm really happy to be here today uh, to celebrate your book. I lent it to a friend right after reading it. I finished it in like two hours and I just really wanted everybody to read it. Um, but yeah, I'm going to start. I, I have five poems. Um, the first one is an astrology poem. So it's uh, about the fifth house. It's called Game Night at the Fifth House. Do you want me to put the poison in the wine I'm drinking or in the beer you'll drink later? Are you still mad at me? If an apple dies as a tree falls into an ocean, are you still staying the night? Do you want to leave me? I love party games. Mafia is my favorite. You are good at killing. Loving is better, familiar, and fatal. I am good at knowing the mood of a door when it closes, if the tap is crying, when it doesn't shut all the way off. I am good at engulfing my space. The couch is capable of breathing and it keeps breaking its legs. I can be good, I promise. I am great at becoming whatever you want me to be. Give me a second, give me time. Let me show you, I promise. I can walk back into that burning target and remember all the things you wanted from the store. No, <laughs> um, sorry, there's people in my living room. Uh, Pisces, <laughs> Pisces Venus retrograding. I love being upset. All I ever wanted was a dyke Darcy looming in the rain with the knife hidden on the side of her thigh. I like how it's too sexy to arouse suspicion. I love and I love you from a girl who doesn't love easily, fully, not at all. The Aries in me makes me a competitor. I have them caving for me. Never met a fool like me before. Oh, how the stars have aligned for us. You're about to sink into me, but you're an Aquarius, carbon monoxide. I'll never feel you kill me. And the Pisces Venus made me think I could save hell from hell. I do it dutifully. I teach you to breathe underwater using my breath. You'll have enough air to swim up to the shore and I'll sink further, waiting to hear those voices in the back of my head. But not enough Virgo made the voices sing, run, 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 faint with no clear direction. This poem is called Stevie Nicks is just right about everything. 
I need to stop crying at landslide. I am too black to be subverting white woman cliches. The car window is too dirty to cry against. And yet I continue to. If I'm going to be a girl boss, I have to try harder to sound less soft when I tell him I don't want him, that it's all fine, and that I just want him happy. I have to save crying for the bathroom and stop doing it on the side of the bed he is not sleeping on. If I can devour my feelings in a shoe haul, then why do stilettos feel like a tightrope? I am sick of my pride. Am I not meant to swallow anything other than wine and cum? I can't be powerful in the way a dehumanized Black Mary Sue is. I can't pretend I'm above being heartbroken. Olivia Pope, please forgive me, but I want ice cream and for him to love me and to be called baby on purpose. I want an airport chase, even if it ends with the plane crashing. I want whatever happened for this to happen, to happen in a way that leads to an aching confession, one that says, the following program will air every Sunday at 2 p.m. for at least five years on W Network and 10 on Star Channel. It contains angst, delusion, and subjective happy endings. Viewer discretion is advised, and for him to watch the ending with me. Uh, this is the poem, uh, Sunlight. This one's in Peach. Um, sunlight. I am happiest in the morning, and at any moment, I don't belong to anyone. The streets are clear, and everyone is going somewhere that's going to kill them by five. I meet my misery happily. I have the whole train ride for morning, but this walk belongs to me. The main character today is a barista in skinny jeans, heel boots, and legs to the chin, ass immaculate. All his strides are elegant, and when I see him at night, he walks the same but faster, excited to put distance between him and wherever he came from. This morning, he walks to the river of whatever I'm playing. Yi sent me a playlist. She says they'll heal me and it does as it's told. So far, the poets I know are invested in instrumentals. The playlist starts with a classical piano. When it plays, I wait for an award nomination to be announced. I wait for tepid applause and a camera pointing at a bashful old lady who's going to lose to Viola Davis. And when Tiana Taylor starts playing, I think about how you can't teach tone and how you can't teach voice. Now you can't teach soul, and it's why Black people are better than everyone else. I put the music at max volume. I'm not interested in my thoughts since waking up. I'm no longer interested in being wronged. And if I belong to me, I'm left with what's left. And what I mean is that sadness wants to hold happy's hand, and happiness is a reluctant partner. Angry keeps getting between them, and I am Black, which means anger is not a feeling, but a state I'm in. It means that every other feeling needs currency, and I never have enough for it. Sadness is the most expensive, and I'm never resilient enough to earn it. I can't feel without weight, and if it's too heavy for me, it's offensive to someone else. But I love the morning. There is no one around to report to, and the sun is embarrassed of its brightness. The air is brisk, and all the trees are happy to die. In the morning, anger is deep asleep, and I get to be happy because it's a feeling I've stolen. And then another sun poem, and last one. It's called Sun Song. I remember the island and when I became it, when I was a full realized thing, when I was salt water, when I flowed to dehydrate to end the idea of love as a series of breaking points. The sun is now only invested in ruining dull skin. It's fallen in love with me. I remember when I lost interest. I tried to say everything I haven't felt in months. I like to fall out of love the way I'm supposed to fall in it. Grand proclamations. I like to leave screaming. I am bad at tense. When I told you I loved you, I should have said it like that. I should have said loved. And I want this to be about us. I want this feeling to belong to you. I am not in love with memory. I've talked myself off the edge. I am fully present. There is no quicksand to sink into. You are long gone. The you isn't you here. I want this to be a bad thing. Thank you for making it easy. It is difficult in the way it isn't at all. I am not isolated. The words don't come out, but I'm no longer afraid of choking. I just can't let you fall out the sky. The water is drinkable, but I am only good at drowning. Yet the waves never catch me. My feet never leave the sand. This ocean is not as deep as it should be, but I can't get lost in anything. When I look up, there's nothing sinking me. I'm addicted to breathing. I can feel the sun warm on my skin, the sky splitting into sunset and it never bleeds, and it never breaks. I am never startled. I am not afraid of your absence. This is not a confession. When the sun leaves to give the moon space, I know I'll see you in the morning. This is not painful. The horizon melts over me, but it has to, because it has to, because darkness is eventual and temporary. 
I can say what I mean because I mean it. I love you. I love you. I love. Thank you.